You're listening to episode 809 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled Stewardship, given on the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 2021. We as people have longings and yearnings that we may not be able to always articulate. Don't answer this aloud, but what is your greatest yearning? What is it that is in your gut, that deepest desire? Does our life reflect that desire? Or do we betray ourselves sometimes and take detours from those things that are fleeting and temporary? These are questions we may not have sometimes the luxury to even ask. Or maybe we're just too busy. Or there's pressures. Maybe there's distractions. We've distracted ourselves so much that we don't ponder on these deep questions. We're all prone to this. We have attitudes, though, that we would like to express about how things should be or how I should be or what I want so that we may have happiness. I say that these are attitudes because those are things that we just think about. They become values when we live them out. When those attitudes are now put into action. So like attitudes are cheap. Though they are the beginning of something. The goal would be a value to put it into action. And it could be simple things. Like I have an attitude I should make my bed. But do I do it? And if you walked into my bedroom, you'd, ha- you'd be a good judge as to whether I do it or not. And I'll leave you with that question. The scriptures tell us that our lives are not our own. They're a gift to us. And that happiness can only be found ultimately in God. We hear from the Lord himself that we must... If we, if we desire to find ourselves, we must lose ourselves. We must die to ourselves if we wish to live. Those are paradoxical truths that we can all participate in and ponder on. But for many, they remain closed and confused. I think we have all those moments all jumbled into one on one day or another. And we strive to seek out happiness. We strive as Christians to seek out God. But we just don't have it in us. We want to go to heaven, I hope. But we can't do it on our own. I was reading a a reflection from a Jesuit, John Cavanaugh. And he said this, just a real quick statement. The only way to heaven is to let go of earth. The only way to heaven is to let go of earth. It's another way of saying we've got to die to ourselves. We need to stop looking to entertain ourselves and look how we can give ourselves away. That is the secret to happiness. But it's the secret that's part of the gospel that leads to something beyond temporal happiness. So enter the church, the bride of Christ. She calls us to love God and our neighbor. And by serving them both, we give ourselves away. And in fact, when we serve someone so that we will get something out of it, our service is emptied. But when we serve expecting nothing back, then we've truly given ourselves away. What kind of behavior might that be? What word could we put to that? And I'd like to offer the word stewardship. It's a word that can be defined as a position of responsibility, a sense of responsible use of resources in the service of God, 
or maybe filling out that word a bit more, it's the sense that we have, it springs up from inside a sense of gratitude for all that God has done for us, and then we act on it. Have you ever had a moment where you were so thankful that you just wanted to give yourself away or give something to somebody and you didn't know where to put it? You didn't know how to do it? See, in the Christian life, this happens at moments that we are not expecting. A great phrase to practice is praise God because now we're giving God what has been given to us. We're recognizing the gift that's been given to us and we're showing gratitude for that gift. None of us are owed it. Another way to codify that, to kind of make it more specific, we'll talk about time, talent, and treasure. Now, remember in the gospel, we had a man who was living all the commandments. Or so he said. And we have no reason to doubt him. And Jesus recognizes this. But he also knew that this man had what? One thing lacking. And it was that he needed to die to his sense of greed and wealth. For the man, he gave all kinds of time and talent in terms of serving the commandments, which is good. But he held tight to his money. Apparently, from what we can gather, money was more important than his time and talent. And so he clinged on to it. And nobody's being served when he clings on to it. I hoped as as I was reading it, because I think somewhere in our own selves, we can be like that. That somewhere, while even Jesus challenges us in this gospel, that we may change. We don't hear the rest of the story of this man. We can assume he did not change. But imagine if he did. He walked away sad. And in that sadness, maybe he had a revelation of how stingy he had been and actually how dark his soul had become because of his greed. The man was yearning for wealth and it warped him. He was no cheerful giver because he didn't give. So he went away sad. As stewards, which he was not one fully, as stewards, we're called to be people recognizing our gifts being called to give of those gifts, whether they be time, talent, and treasure, not for ourselves, but for the glory of God and for the love of his people. We're literally standing in an example of that activity by our parish. This building would not exist if we were just doing it for ourselves. We did it for others and for our loved ones, some who had passed on. So this week, we'll be sending out a brochure to everyone. We do this every year as part of our stewardship program to help folks discern how they may participate in the ministries of the church via time, talent, and treasure. And I think this is the key to our Christian life, to give of ourselves. If all we do is invest in our own selves, which we should also do, but if that's all we do, we become very selfish and inward turning like that man who held on to all of his money. Our mission here as church is to spread the gospel. That is the mission of Jesus. If you look at our website or other documents, our our actual uh, statement of who we are, is that we are a welcoming parish engaged with the Holy Spirit to do Christ's loving mission. So the church has not got a program of evangelization, We are called to evangelize. That's just what we're about. So maybe giving your time, maybe instead of uh, seeing people pass by at the end of Mass or somebody that you know later in the week, but to stop and talk with them and ask them how they're doing. Spending time with them instead of saying, I'll pray for you, to actually pray for them there, right then and now. An easy question might be, Is there something I can pray for, for you? You may get a no, but you're likely going to get a yes. Or, well, I'm okay. Both of those are yeses in my camp. 
great, let's keep praying that you're more okay. So the brochure is encouraging us to think about time, talent, and treasure. The brochure has a letter from me on the front, and then a financial report, and then a, a page that mimics the, what is our commitment card that we'll pass out next week. You can even fill it out there in the brochure, tear it off, and bring it in if you like. But I'd like you to read it and pray over it. Many of the ministries have possibly gone on a uh, timeout because of COVID. But if that's an ministry you're involved in now or wish to be involved in, uh, fill it in or put a check mark on it. Our goal, and we do this imperfectly every year, but our goal is then we uh, print this out by ministry, whether it be, let's say, pastoral council or admin council or uh, crafting group or whatever it might be. The leader of that group gets that list and they're to call then all the new people just to let them know we got it. It takes time though, I want you to know, so if you hear this, some people said, I didn't get a call, nobody called me. And it was just a month since you'd uh, filled it in. It takes us a couple months to do this because of just the, all the sheer number of people. But the goal is to look into 2022. Isn't that amazing? Or just saying, I mean, I remember 2021 was like, boy, that's a, that's a big number. Now we're 2022. In fact, it's going to be hard to say it, say it really fast. 2022. But I ask you then to be prepared to fill out a commitment card next week during this time at Mass. Or you can fill it out at home and just bring it in. We'll then have you put it in the collection basket or we'll have pass out baskets specific for that, for that purpose. And then we will go forward. But as you do so, think about when it comes to not just time and talent, but the treasure part. Uh, some people are aspirational which is not really helpful. What I mean by aspirational is like, I'd love to give a million dollars a week. I'm being ridiculous here, but wouldn't that be great if you could actually do that? But that's, that's not likely. Only God can do that, I guess, or somebody named um, Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos or, you know, those people. I don't think they're here. I mean, hold on. Nope. Okay, so that one's out. But nonetheless... Instead, be prudent as we hear in the scriptures. What is it that you can give? And the idea is to think in terms of week, a week time. I give and I have it done through what's called ACH, which is Automatic Clearinghouse. It gets deducted from my, my bank account each week. And it's, for me, it just takes one stress off my plate, but at the same time fulfills my commitment. So it's not a pledge. Like we pledge to the church. This is a commitment. So be prudent what can you do? And whatever that may be, that's what we'll put in the database and then we'll make an accounting to you, as we hear also in the scripture, to be accountable. And if anything changes for you, let's say you discern that uh, during the year you can give more or you need to give less, or you let us know and then we'll adjust that so that we're not tracking you and you go, gosh, uh, this numbers, these don't jive with what I knew. You can always call the office and we'll look those kind of things up. So again, I leave you with this question that I began with. What is your greatest yearning? And whatever it seems to be, because even if we do detours, we were trying to do that. It, was, it began with the right hope. Whatever it seems to be, it ultimately is intended to point us to heaven and to commune with God and all the angels and saints. And one way to make a small step toward that goal, considering your time, talent, and treasure, is to participate in the ministries of your parish community. It won't be attained by lavishing portions of these three things on ourselves, but rather in giving them away, our time, talent, and treasure, in love and joy and thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. And if there's one tragedy that could happen is if we do not recognize what God has done for us, whatever that may be, despite COVID, despite other hardships, whatever it may be, God has not stopped giving to us. So this week, then let's spend some time, maybe there'll be some homework while you read this uh, brochure to make an accounting of your own gratefulness to what God has done for you and all the people around you have done for you. May God bless you in your discernment.
Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bills Podcast. If you have any comments or questions, I encourage you to go to my website, fatherbill.org. That's F-R-B-I-L-L dot org. And there you can email me directly from the webpage. You can see what's going on on Facebook or Twitter, uh, Instagram. Don't do mo- a lot of Instagram, very little, but uh, it's there. And uh, I'll try to do my best to get back to you and answer questions or, or comments you might have. In the meantime, may God bless you, stay safe, and have a great week. Bye-bye.